Hello and welcome back to Down the Track. Uh, today we'll be reviewing day three of the MCG Boxing Day Test match between India and Australia. Uh, Australia have a two-run lead, but they only have four wickets in hand. They need to set a total for India. Uh, it might be more than 36, it might be less than 36, but uh, only time will tell. Uh, but I have with me my brother, uh, Yusuf Ismail. Well, how are you doing? I'm doing well. And as usual, completely predicted day three wrong from yesterday and this series keeps surprising us to no end it's insane how unpredictable the series is yeah i mean um uh, that rahane run out after that india capitulated i mean they got all out quickly uh, 130 run lead a very good lead very sizable lead but uh Decent, yeah. but uh, all the commentators you could also see like the actual pitch the sun coming out it was probably the best day to bat uh, yesterday so were you um, a bit surprised and disappointed the with uh, the way australia batted like expected more from them i think uh, after honey also it was like oh no here we go again only they added between 40 and 50 runs so it's like okay fine 130 is not bad it'll give you know something to chew on considering the way the pitch has been playing you know maybe australia could you know take the game away but it was surprising the way that they batted. And Smith, again, did not trouble the scorecards. I think he scored like 10 runs in the series or less. Um, and yeah, I think they didn't get out to like insanely good balls, but India was bowling well, man. There was Very a period where just... They put the pressure yeah. on. Jaspreet Bumrah was, at one point, he came around the wicket and he was just bowling Yorkers to Cameron Green. Yeah. And it was... It, the, the stuff you expect Australian bowlers to do to Indians... That's what the Indian bowlers are doing to Australia. They're giving like, you know, like nice bouncers, snorters by the nose. You know how Mitchell Stark gave one to Jadeja, just, just went past him. You know, mm. so it's like, um, I think unexpected Australian batting performance and not unexpected, but above expectations for India's bowling. They bowled outstanding. Yeah, and the fifth bowler came uh, into use because uh, Omish Adav got injured early on after getting the wicket of... Uh... Uh, Burns, he got injured and uh, went off. So um, uh, having Jadeja and the team paid off both with the bat and ball. It's a brilliant decision, master stroke. I think he's taken Manjrekar's words personally, and for the last season, he's just on fire. He's not at one point when he used to come into bat, you wouldn't think that you know he's solid enough to score 100. Now, his technique, his solidity, his compactness with the bat is awesome, and he's improved with the ball too. He's not like an Ashwin who has like six variations, but he does the job line and length. He gets you know, sometimes he'll throw in the faster one without flight. He'll get purchased on a decent wicket, but he's, I think he's India's all rounder, man. Like he's proven it. And I, I was never a big fan of his, but he's proven that he's a, you know, suitable all rounder in the Indian team, batting yeah, at seven or even yeah. six. Yeah, definitely. He picked up uh, two wickets, which turned the game quickly. Um, uh, the wicket of Wade. And then I actually want to talk about the elephant in the room, the wicket of Tim Payne. Uh, I don't know if you saw that, but uh, the hotspot showed nothing on it. But the Snicko showed a huge uh, sound. Uh, and so the, um, the third umpire went with the Snicko. And apparently yeah. that's the protocol. Like, um, you have to go with the, one of the two. If the hotspot doesn't show something, but the Snicko does, you have to go with that. But yeah. uh, a lot of people were saying that's not yeah. out. Uh, but uh, it's funny that Tim Payne also had that run out in the first innings and now this yeah and he's just been it's just uh bad luck and i think shane Warne was like super pissed off he's like no it's because he scuffed his foot on the you know while moving back and it's like no it's the sound of his feet scratching against the wicket it's like it's purely i think it's unlucky i don't think there's a big controversy um you know like i think it could be, be something in the technology i heard harsha bogle saying that uh, the hotspot technology he spoke i think he's uh, he's disgusted with the actual guy who created the hotspot uh, apparently okay. it's like temperature monitored or something like that's heat monitored or something so it okay. could, uh, sometimes it could not produce that mark on the bat so it could be that or it could be what Shane Warren said the noise coming with the foot uh, but uh, when, when the ball is passing the bat but yeah it could be either one but yeah you, it is technology, so it's going to falter sometime. I think the Australians don't have something to complain about too much because, um, again, this is not, maybe it's not that relevant, but I think Jadeja was saying, or one of the Indian players was saying that it's a shame that international empires can't I empire in Australia. Yeah. Bumra said that, right? So, like, he was insinuating indirectly that, oh, they'll be a bit biased towards India because it's both Australians. Like, you know, the problem back in the day, right? Because yeah. that's why we had neutral empires in test series, bilaterals. So, uh, there's, he can't argue because an Australian umpire gave him out and he did it based on the rules. So it, it might have been controversial, but I don't think he has anything to complain about apart from hard luck. That's my opinion. 
Yeah, and also a couple of uh, LVW decisions went in Australia's favor. It's fifty-fifty, so it's umpire's call. So uh, if the umpire gave it out, he would have been out. I think it was Burns and Labushin both LBW. Uh, yeah. It was a fifty-fifty call, which went in Australia's favor. This didn't, but it is controversial because one uh, piece of technology sh- shows clearly it's not out, and one shows it's clearly yeah. out. So, uh, but the protocol says you have to go which whatever gives you the conclusive evidence. So uh, it's not like both have to show it. That's why you have the second snickle. Uh, if it was just relying on hotspot you wouldn't have snickle so that's the rule yeah. but uh, at the same time from pain's perspective it is uh, frustrating because uh, one piece of evidence clearly showing that he didn't touch it uh, yeah. so yeah uh, and i think i think uh, modern day indian keepers are not like nine munger who apply, who appeal for everything so i think there was they heard something and they went up because rishabh pant and jadeja went up pretty fast it wasn't like a delayed appeal or anything like as soon as it happened they were up right Yeah, and so, I think more than that, Rahane was, was standing and slipped, so he went straight away. So yeah. if Rahane probably heard something, but yeah. Uh, and did you see? Did you see how Rah- after Rahane was given run out, he patted Jadeja on the back? It's like it's okay, don't worry about it. It's yeah, like yeah. such a contrast in captaincy styles, you know. Yeah, he was in the same shoes in the last game. Uh, he ran out Kohli, so he yeah. knows how it feels to run out the captain. So uh, experience telling there, and he's very calm. Like uh, he probably he's knew a that classy character. He's a classy guy, yeah. I think. I I once said if he batted on they could have got a 200 lead but also uh, given the other hand like he got dropped a couple of times so he did add 30 40 runs after that so like you know either way like it's okay he uh, he he'd be hard done by but he knows that like he, he needs Jadeja with the ball as well um, yeah. and a few runs whatever he hits with the bat it would be important so I think it was very good of him to pat him and uh, encourage him to uh, to bat on um, But yeah, I think and Jadeja, that, I think that and that mental boost helped him with the ball, right? Two wickets, like you said. So yeah, uh, and now uh, Cummins and uh, Cameron Green batting. Uh, how many runs are you expecting? Is, this is the most frustrating time for an Indian team, for Indian fans uh, in particular, yeah. because this is the for some reason this is the most difficult time. When is the Indian tail? Australia blow them out in f- like five to ten, fifteen runs. But when yeah. it's Australian tail, it does take some time. But still, um, uh, looking at the pitch, looking at everything else. Uh, Not too many demons there. It looks like a good pitch to bat on. A, a bit of purchase, and India utilized that. But uh, at the same time, I don't think um, any anything under 100 will trouble India. Okay, Maybe so me- apart from that, I don't think. <laughs> I think uh, I'm not going to really predict anything because I really don't know what's going to happen. I think it's e- it's equally possible that Australia puts up a hundred run stand tomorrow uh, for the eighth wicket. It's entirely possible. <sighs> Yesterday, I put my neck out and I said that you know India would score 200. That didn't come even close. A uh, 200 lead, but that never came close. I think uh, India will be given a target of around 100. Let's 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 be let's balance it out. I think 100 and 100 will trouble them. Uh, if it's 100, I think they should win it, but they will maybe lose four or five wickets wow. chasing 100. Yeah, no. To be this honest, is a very, think, this is a very far out theory, but that's what I think. Yeah, I like. I think the first twenty, uh, thirty minutes they will get a, a chances. It's about grabbing those opportunities. Uh, like Cummins was Rish- dropped, right? Yeah, Rishabh Pant dropped him, but that's what you're gonna get. I said that also before. Uh, Rishabh Pant will drop a couple of catches. Saha is a much better keeper, but then Rishabh Pant gets those extra runs, which Saha probably yeah. doesn't. So uh, it's a catch twenty two with him. Uh, uh, it was a. You know he should have caught that. Uh, uh, it was a keeper's catch, but at the same time, like you know, you know that there are weaknesses in his keeping. But also, w- w- one thing I like about him is that he keeps chirping. Uh, we started getting engaging with Matthew Wade, uh, and it's good to see that banter and get into the <laughs> batsman's mind because it helps. Like if you're uh, uh, the Aussies won't stop, they'll do it as well, right? So when you're yeah. Uh, like when Saha was there, apart from Kohli, no one sledges in that team. So I think uh, Rishabh Rishab Pant being there, uh, it gives that extra X factor to India. Like you know, chirping, causing something, and you could see Wade was um, reacting. So when you, once you start reacting, then you you do lose focus. Uh, remember, I think it was the last ball before lunch. It's like he was wide, and he literally like turned around and looked at Pant like that. It was yeah. like literally like. <laughs> so yeah, it definitely worked and. I don't know if it led to his downfall, but Rishabh Pant adding that kind of cheekiness, which he did in the last tour as well. Yeah. I think that's uh, it's it it just adds to the mix for India. Yeah, I mean it's entertainment for the audience, hundred percent. But also it does ha- help the team. Like if you can get into the minds of the Aussies, why not? Like because they will give it to you regardless. Yeah, yeah. So uh, no I think that helps. But yes, he did, does need to improve his uh, catching and he needs to improve his keeping, especially to the spinners. And I think that's why he's not the keeper in India because in, the ball turns a lot and you need somebody like Saha who can get the. Stumps who can like you know 
pick the turn and everything like that. So I think that's why he still doesn't keep in Indian t- in test matches in India. Um, yeah, and I think he's done well abroad as a batsman, right? Like his breakout series was in Australia. Yeah, yeah. He he doesn't like he doesn't have that typical problem that Indian batsmen do with the bounce and stuff. Like he he uses the pace well. You can he's got that strength inside of him, that bone strength. It's not muscle. It's like inside he's got that in, in you know inherent. Uh, strength. Yeah. So I think maybe it is a good call to keep Punt for overseas and Rosaha for India, depending on how many spinners they play, right? Yeah. And in your opinion, is this is like a, a, little, a little random, but who's a better keeper, Saha or Dhoni? Uh, so I, in, ter- Sa- in terms I, of in terms of like technical wicket keeping, not as a batsman. Uh, Saha, but Dhoni uh, evolved his game. He he customized a few things. Uh, the way he started collecting the ball way in front of him, so the the time between uh, his gloves and hitting the stumps was uh, <clears throat> shortened because he had a uh, very unorthodox thing. So Dhoni was the most improved keeper, I think, of all time. Uh, yeah. uh, because he was, but technically, Saha has always been sound. He's so Saha uh, is like your go to wicket keeper, right? In he's a proper, uh, he's a proper wicket yeah. keeper. He's a full time wicket keeper. Dhoni was picked more on his batting, uh, but then yeah. he evolved his keeping. You can't, uh, uh, deny so do that. you think Pant has the ability or no? He's not, he doesn't have that. Do you think it's just not his thing? Like, he can, he can he's good enough to play as a batsman. Uh, no, I think he's he, playing. Uh, you need to uh, like if he's in the team, you have to. Uh, he has to keep. Uh, there's no point playing two keepers. Uh, I don't think he can just play as a batsman. Uh, right now, I think he's uh, he's very effective in overseas conditions because you mm. saw uh, the 30 runs he scored was a quick read, so it put the pressure back on Australia and it took the pressure off Rahane, who started batting yeah. freely as well. So uh, yeah. I think uh, his batting, um, those quick runs will help India, whether it's 30, 40, 50. Uh, but I, at the same time, I think uh, with his batting, if he can become a bit more mature, a better short selection, I think. If he can improve mm-hmm. that, uh, he can be a very lethal batsman in test matches. He can be that counter-attacking player you need in the bar. Um, Gilchrist, kind of. Yeah, I mean, Gilchrist was not to that level, but like uh, that effect, the effect that Gilchrist had yeah, like coming uh, in at number seven. Yeah, if you could do that, then I think that would be good. Uh, any other thoughts on the day? Like any other observations? Did you see anything that you know intrigued you, or it's like, oh, what was that? Like, just any. What are your thoughts on the day's play, and what do you think is going to happen tomorrow? Uh, no, I think it's, uh, it might be a frustrating day for India, but uh, whatever target is set, I think they should chase it because it's just four wickets left. Um, they will get chances. It's about grabbing those can- uh, chances. Ideally, um, a 50-60 run target would be comfortable. Uh, at the, this pitch is, uh, doesn't, has as many, doesn't have as many demons, but you never know what test cricket. They got 36 all out, but I'm sure they learned from that. You can't keep getting all out like that uh, uh, and keep worrying about that. You're like, you know, the proper international test team, so you have to learn from your mistakes. Um, um, and yeah, the, for India, the, uh, like, you know, the earlier they wrap it up, the better. Australia just need to keep trying to irritate, frustrate them, uh, g- get those runs, uh, Cummins and Green, try to be a bit more aggressive. If they get out, they get out. But uh, if they can get runs, then they'll put pressure on India. So anything can happen, but I think India are still favorites to win this test match. And, and just a follow-up, follow-up question, if India do win, is it the most unexpected test win in recent history for India, considering the circumstances or no? Yeah, yeah, it has to be. It has to be. The, the 36 all out, then no Virat Kohli, no Shami, no Rohit Sharma. Uh, I think it has to be probably the, the greatest test win in recent times, for sure. Uh, cool. But yeah, only time will tell what will happen. Uh, apart from that, I think, uh, yeah, uh, I'll see you after day four. We'll probably get a result today. Either way, I think, uh, unless <laughs> unless Green scores a hundred, Green has potential. He's a he, in the domestic circuit. He has a few hundreds and everything. But I just is he like, a BBL? Is he a BBL specialist or no? He's more in the no, shield. No, uh, the shield cricket, right? Like, uh, okay, he, uh, he's a good all rounder. He's performed well. He scored hundreds, but I just he's feel, tall. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, he has the height, but I just feel that um, he has a long reach as well. But I just feel if Smith and Labushin struggled, um, it's not going to be easy unless like there are chances given to him. So um, let's see how that goes. But uh, thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully, I'll catch you uh, after um, the day's play, day four. See you then. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you.